Previously, on a tribute to Uncle Ben. In part three of our series, the viewer's surfacing world was made more complex by introducing the lofted surface, boundary surface, and trim surface tools. Stay tuned for the series finale, where without introducing some surfacing best practices, Spidey's ring and its potential infinite power could be destroyed. We're just about wrapped up with our design, but this body is still an open surface. Before we close the surface and transform it into a solid body, I'd like to point out that connected surfaces can be filleted just as you would fill it a solid. You'll see the fillet feature box in both the surfaces tab and the features tab of the command manager. Let's soften up the power and infinity symbols a bit with some small fillets. Now we're ready to cap the open side of this ring. We can do this in multiple ways, and one way is more economical than the other in this case. We can use either the planar surface tool or the filled surface tool. First, let's enter the planar surface tool. Let's select our outer edges. Here's a tip for quickly selecting multiple edges. Instead of clicking on these connected edges one at a time, right click on one of the edges and click on select open loop to select the entire loop of edges. Let's select our inner edge and we have our new face. But notice that the main body and this new face are still separate bodies. We now must use the knit surface tool to merge these bodies together. Enter the tool and simply click the surfaces you'd like to merge. And we'll make sure the merge entities and create solid options are selected. Take a look at our history tree. SolidWorks automatically creates a solid bodies folder when converting surfaces to solids. This will usually be your first place to look when ensuring you've successfully converted to a solid body. Now let's delete these last two operations and take a look at the Filled Surface tool. As you can see in the Filled Surface tool, you have many more options to choose from. Using this tool in this case can save us a step by allowing us to create the sidewall of our ring and convert the ring into a solid in one operation by selecting the Merge Result and Create Solid options. You may be wondering why use the planar surface tool when the filled surface tool provides the same function with more powerful options. The planar surface tool is quite powerful as well, especially when creating multiple surfaces on the same plane, as shown in this example. Also, the planar surface tool doesn't require a closed sketch or set of edges in order to create a surface. On the other hand, the Filled Surface tool requires a closed sketch or set of edges and is only capable of creating single surfaces, though it has the capability of filling some rather complex areas. So the Planar Surface tool definitely has its place in your toolbox. Now let's take a look at one more powerful surface feature. To make this ring more comfortable, let's change the inner face of the ring from a straight cylindrical face to a convex shape by using the Replace Face feature. First, we are going to create our replacement surface using the Revolved Surface tool. So let's create an arc sketch with a sketched center line, and we want to make sure the arc sits tangent to the internal face of our ring, so we don't alter its size. And again, we want to make sure our sketch is fully constrained. After revolving this sketch around its center line, we can use the Replace Face feature. Select the existing face first, and then select the replacement face. The body is automatically trimmed back to include this new convex internal face. Since we've been working with this ring as a solid body, we could have accomplished this same look by using a simple revolved cut feature. But I wanted to show you this powerful Replace Face feature which can really come in handy, particularly when making edits to imported geometry. Now that we're happy with our solid body, we can delete the reference surface bodies that are no longer needed. 
Under the Surface Bodies folder in the History tree, simply select the bodies you want to delete and hit the Delete button on your keyboard. Note that this function doesn't permanently delete the bodies, it actually creates an editable feature on your History tree called the Delete slash Keep Body feature, so you can always roll your History tree back if you need to make edits to your part. Finally, let's just soften up the design a bit by adding some 0.02 inch fillets. Throughout this series, we've given you some best practices on constraining sketches, keeping history tree cluttered down, and using the best feature tool for the job. You are now on your way to infinite surfacing power. If you would like to test out your newly found surfacing powers, check out the download instructions in the video description below to download this blank version of the ring. This is your friendly neighborhood SolidWorks guy saying thanks for watching.